Religious people can always fall back on their religious doctrine to find guidance as to the morality of things. When it comes to the issue of carnivorousness, Hindus have Dharmic law that tells them that it's wrong, or Abrahamists have a book that tells them it's okay. But as atheists, what guides our moral compass to determine the rightness or wrongness for this particular issue? Of course, this is not the only issue with gray areas for atheists. Abortion, war, fidelity, and many other issues are all subjective questions once we become aware that there is no such thing as objective morality and no moral lawgiver. But the issue of eating meat is particularly vexing. So can we approach the issue logically to determine a moral guideline, especially if no objective goalposts exist to start from? There are certainly a few established and relatively objective ideas we can assume. For example, it is generally wrong to kill for no reason. It's also wrong to kill a fellow human being under duress or to allow one to die if it can be prevented. It's also necessary to eat in order to survive, and the urge to survive is extant in all living things. So now we can begin to examine the arguments for and against meat-eating with these fairly objective ideas in mind. The first argument for meat-eating often cited is that it is in our nature to eat meat. Arguably, this is a true statement. Our closest relative, the chimp, is a carnivore. We evolved with many effective tools for hunting and we enjoy the hunt and the taste of flesh. But just because something is natural doesn't make it moral. Infidelity is natural. Aggression is natural. Tribalism is natural. Yet none of these things are moral in an objective sense. The first argument against eating meat is that it is not necessary. We can get all of our sustenance from vegetation. This too is true, but just because something is not necessary does not make it automatically immoral. Human flight is not necessary but that didn't make the Wright brothers immoral. Fermenting alcohol for human consumption is also no longer necessary to make potable beverages, but we still do it, and it's not objectively wrong. Both sides also make arguments that their way is healthier, but that's not even a moral argument, so it doesn't matter for this discussion. In fact, most other arguments fail to meet any moral standard either way. For me, what it comes down to is that we have to eat to survive and we have to kill what we eat, be it animal or vegetable. And the only thing that distinguishes an animal from a vegetable is a central nervous system. So is it objectively wrong to kill something with a central nervous system? Well, our bodies are constantly expunging parasites. Bacteria are constantly being eradicated by our blood and gastric juices and other natural processes, but bacteria don't have brains. However, mites do. Mites, lice, flukes, nematodes, and others die by both natural means and intentional human activity designed to rid us of these parasites all the time and as a means of self-preservation, killing them is clearly acceptable morally. So, is it acceptable to kill something that thinks and is therefore self-aware for self-defense but not for sustenance? Personally, I don't see how the self-aware barrier is so overriding. We harvest plants and we harvest milk. We reap grains. Why can't we reap unfertilized eggs? In fact, in the case of eggs, there's not even a central nervous system present. But even if there were, it's not aware. And if we castrate a bull, to stimulate cows to produce milk without the threat of impregnation, why can't we eat the harvested Rocky Mountain oysters? So we can see how easy it is to justify eating meat and meat products when the issue of self-awareness is removed, and how easy it is to justify killing self-aware things for our own self-preservation. So why is it actually crucial to remove the self-aware factor at all in order to justify eating something? Now, there is a moral argument to be made that modern ranching and animal farming is gratuitously cruel, that animals we would eat suffer needlessly. This may be a valid argument with genuine moral implications, but it's not in itself an argument for vegetarianism. It's an argument to explore the necessity of oversight and humane guidelines in meat production. However, there is a psychological argument to be made from the other side as well. When people go to war or become prison guards, or hunt, or fish, or butcher animals, it is psychologically necessary to shut off the anthropic, empathetic imaginings in our minds. We can't kill a turtle for soup if we are thinking of it as a pet and imagining that it has a family. And we can't march a prisoner to the firing squad if we are thinking about his mother nursing him as a child. I think we too often judge those who have conditioned their minds for blood sport too harshly, judging them by an unnecessary luxury we have adopted which hinders us and prevents us from accepting that our nature is neither moral nor immoral. It simply is. Nothing lives that doesn't die. Nothing lives that doesn't want to continue to live. Life is an experience. Some days you get the dog. Some days the dog gets you. Thank you.